So I see some new people there today that I've never seen before. That's awesome. Uh, some kids, which is more awesome. Um, so I, I'm Shepard. I'm a Lighthouse Youth Director. Um, so I, I work with youth mostly. And so I tailor most of my stuff towards youth, even though most of the time I'm talking to adults now. So um, you guys will see up on the screen, there's like 52 slides for this whole thing. So there's a lot of pictures and a lot of them actually are kind of funny. So pay attention up there and I'll be less boring is what I'm trying to tell you. So uh, but I'm, we're gonna open it up with a, a prayer and move on from there. Okay, so dear God, thank you so much for today. Thank you for the rain, because I'm sure flowers need it and such things. Um, thank you for that. Thank you that we can be here and gather together and worship you and celebrate you and learn with you. And, uh, and thank you for everyone who came here today. And we might hear this later. Please bless this, uh, bless the words, and uh, amen. So, over the last couple weeks, Ewan has been um, looking at Jesus' prayer in the garden um, leading up to being arrested. And so he, he's covered it really well. It was actually, if you weren't here, there were really good sermons there. They gave you this really good feeling about how Jesus was prepping the disciples, but also prepping like the people who later here, um, and basically trying to set up everyone, everyone up for what was coming. But so we're going to recap just a little bit. So first up, uh, after he prayed, he, he covered this part. There was uh, Jesus and Judas, that whole thing, where Judas comes and betrays Jesus, and you know they come in. He comes in with the soldiers. So he gives them a kiss on the cheek. He's like the guy I kiss on the cheek. He's going to do this. Um, and so he gets arrested. Okay. Next up, we have Peter, who was told earlier that he would deny Jesus three times that night before the rooster comes. He literally is like, you're going to deny me three times. And Jesus, and Peter's like, not a chance would I ever, ever do this. And then first up, he immediately does this when he gets questioned. Better. He's like, nah, nah I, don't, I don't even know the guy. I've never seen him before. Um, then Jesus is brought by the high priest, and they uh, ask him a bunch of questions, and he, he answers them honestly, and they hit him. And he didn't say anything worth getting hit him, but they hit him, and he's like, why am I being hit? He's being annoyed, being like, telling the truth. And then they cut, it cuts back to Peter denying Jesus for the last time, and there's two crying. Um, and like, he realizes, yeah, I denied him three times, that was really stupid. Um, so that brings us to Jesus being brought before Pilate. Okay, so Pilate was a guy who was in charge from Rome. He was a Roman official. He was a politician, and he was in charge of the whole region. Um, he was placed there, and basically they decided to bring him to Pilate because they needed to. They wanted to kill Jesus, but they could. They didn't have the authority to do that. So they're like. This is where we're going. So we're, what we're going to do for, for you guys who don't know this, we're going to read through the story. And this, so this is the entire time before Jesus is with Pilate. It's a bit long, but we're going to go quickly through it. Um, and so it's like he's brought to Pilate. And it's his whole trial before he's taken away to be crucified. So we're going to go through it all real quickly. And then we're going to go back verse by verse and kind of look at what it actually says. So uh, starting on uh, verse 28 of uh, John 18, it says... Then they led Jesus from the house of Caiaphas to the governor's headquarters. It was early morning. They themselves did not enter the governor's headquarters, so they would not be defiled, but could eat the Passover. So Pilate went outside to them and said, What accusations do you bring against this man? They answered him, This is, is this man, or if this man were not doing evil, we would not have delivered him over to you. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and, and, and judge him by your own law. And the Jews said to him, it is not lawful for us to put anyone to death. This was to fulfill the word that Jesus had spoken to show that what kind of death he was going to have. So Pilate entered the headquarters again and called Jesus and said to him, are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus answered, do you say this or of your own accord or did others say this about me? Pilate answered, am I a Jew? You own your own nation and chief priests have delivered you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would have been fighting. But I might not be that I might not be delivered over to the Jews, but my kingdom is not of this world. Then Pilate said to him, So you are a king. Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this purpose I was born, and for this purpose I have come into the world, to bear witness to, to, to the truth. 
Everyone who is of truth listens to my voice. Pilate said to him, What is truth? After he had said this, he went back outside to the Jews and told them, I find no guilt in him, but you have a custom that you should release one man to you at the Passover, so do you want me to release the king of the Jews? They cried out again, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. Then Pilate took Jesus and flogged him. And he, the soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head and arrayed him in a purple robe. They came up to him saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and struck him with their hands. Pilate went out again and said to them, So, see, I am bringing to you, him out to you again, so that you may know, know that I find no guilt in him. So Jesus came out wearing a crown of thorns and a purple robe. Pilate said to them, Behold the man. When the chief priests and the officers saw him, they cried out, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate uh, said to him, said to them, Take him away yourself and crucify him, for I find no guilt in him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and according to the law, he ought to be die. He ought to die because he has made himself the Son of God. When Pilate heard this statement, he was very, even more afraid. He entered the headquarters again and said to Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer, so Pilate said to him, You will not speak to me? Do you not know that I have authority to release you and the authority to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no authority over me at all unless it be given to you from above. Therefore, he who delivered me over to you has the greater sin. From then on, Pilate sought to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you are not Caesar's friend. Everyone who makes himself a king opposes Caesar. So when Pilate heard these words, he brought, him, he brought Jesus out and sat down at the judgment seat at a place called the Stone Pavement in, in Aramaic, Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation for the Passover. It was about the sixth hour. He said to the Jews, Behold your king! They cried out, Away with him! Away with him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? And the chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. So he delivered him over to them to be crucified. Man, I need a nap. That was a big section of scripture. And and I could have broken this up into three weeks, but I kind of wanted just to get it over with. It's one big thing. So, and bear with me, I'll do this as quickly as I can so it's not super boring. But that was the whole trial of Jesus. That was literally from when he got to Pilate to when Pilate went, okay, take him away, crucify him. So let's break it down. Let's let's look over this. So we're gonna go through this first verse. So First, they led Jesus from the house of Caiaphas. Caiaphas, Caiaphas was the high priest, uh, to the governor's headquarters. It was early morning. They themselves did not want to enter the governor's headquarters so that they would not be defiled but could eat the Passover. So this is like Jewish social distancing at its finest. This is literally, if they went into the governor's house, they as Jews going into a Gentile's house would be defiled and they would not actually get to eat the Passover, which is a big deal, it's a big celebration. So they're like, we can't go in that house. So they literally are like, we can't go in there. So that's why they didn't go in. That's where they're like, hey, can you come out so we don't have to go in? So the next verse, so Pilate went outside to them and said, what accusation do you bring to this man? So Pilate would have obviously heard about Jesus by this point. He's the guy in charge of the region. He would have heard about this guy named Jesus, but he wouldn't know what he looks like necessarily. And he was probably annoyed at being woken up by an angry mob that showed up at his door, bringing this guy to him. And to him, this isn't a Roman matter. This is a Jewish guy that's doing things against Jewish people that they don't like. It has nothing to do with them. So they answered him, if this man were not doing evil, would we not have delivered him over to you? Now, this is vague. Like, this is like, come on, he's probably done something. Um, they were trying to get Pilate to do their dirty work. They wanted to kill Jesus. They were hoping that Jesus would go in and say enough things to Pilate that Pilate would go, oh, well, you're worthy of death. Let's kill you. So they were hoping to get him to do all the hard work. Okay? All right, so Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him by your own laws. And the Jews said to them, It is not lawful for us to put anyone to death. So Pilate's not having it. He's just like, Why the heck would you bring this guy? Why'd you wake me up? These are Jewish problems. They should, they should have Jewish solutions. And the problem is they want the death penalty. And Jews were not allowed to kill. Like the Jewish authorities were not allowed to kill people. That was a Roman thing. Romans were like, we kill people. You don't get to kill people. And so they didn't have the right to kill him. And they would have gotten in trouble if they had. Even if, like, no matter what he'd done, they had to bring him to Rome. So they're trying to talk him into killing Jesus. 
So, and then it goes on, this was to fulfill the word that Jesus had spoken to show by what kind of death he was going to die. The Jewish leaders would never have ever put Jesus on a cross. That was not a Jewish thing. They stoned people to death, generally. They took a bunch of stones and, and hit them until they stopped breathing. Um, they didn't have the right to put Jesus on the cross. Only Romans did that. That was a Roman thing. So uh, they were actually playing right into Jesus' hands for his whole thing to set up on talk about that. Okay. So Pilate entered his headquarters again and called Jesus and said, said to him, Are you a king of the Jews? So he wants to know, who exactly are you? Why are they bringing you to me? Why, like, why did they want to kill you so much? And Jesus answered, do you say this of your own accord, or did others say this about me? So this is interesting, because Jesus knows the answer, right? Jesus knows already what the child knows, because he's, he's Jesus, he's God, he actually knows these things. But he still asks the question so Pilate can have things to think about. He's just like, are you asking this question? Who told you to ask that? So, um, Pilate answers, am I a Jew? Your own nation, the chief priests have delivered you over me. What have you done? And so Pilate's doing some probing here. Because he, again, this is early morning, he doesn't understand, why the heck are these people bringing you? I don't even understand why you're here. And he's trying to figure out what's exactly going on. But he also doesn't want to let Jesus know that he doesn't know exactly what's going on. So he's trying to, and he doesn't want the Jewish leaders to not know that he knows what's going on. So he's trying to figure it out. He's like, what? why are you here? I don't get it. So Jesus answers, my kingdom is not of this world. My kingdom, if it were of this world, my servants would have been fighting. And I might, er, that I might not be delivered over the Jews. But my kingdom is not of this world. So Jesus finally kind of throws Pilate a bone. He kind of gives him something. He's like, I'm a king, but my kingdom's not of this world. Um, then Pilate says to him, so you're a king. He's like, finally, I got this out of you're a king. Jesus answers, you say I'm a king. For this purpose, I was born. And for this purpose, I've come into the world to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who, who is of the truth listens to my voice. Now, this is again my favorite time of any sermon I can take where I can talk about the gospel. The gospel is the good news of what Jesus did. So, Jesus was born to literally die for your sin and for my sin. So there's this whole thing where once upon a time, we were perfect and then we sinned and sin has been in the world ever since. It's part of our DNA. We wake up in the morning and we already have sin in us. Um, one more we already have sin in us. And God's like, I can't accept that. And so the only way you can fix that was to literally pay the price for that. And that's why he sent Jesus. And so Jesus, this whole thing is leading up to Jesus being crucified and dying and taking all your sin and all my sin and everyone's sin on himself and giving us a way to be right with God. So he literally is like, you say I'm a king, for this I was born, I'm born to be a king. And if you, again, we talked before, um, he's, Jesus is the truth, the truth is a person. And Jesus is like, if you know the truth, you listen to me. Why do you listen to him? Because he's the truth. So it's one of those things where he's just like, listen to me. So Pilate says to him, what is truth? And Jesus again would be like, me. But after this, uh, they went outside and the Jews told them, I find he just told them, I find no guilt in him. So Pilate's not dumb. He's basically like, Jesus has him a little stumped because he's like, what's going on? Like, you're saying you're a king, but you're not a king of this thing and your truth and like, I, I don't know what's going on. So he just comes up, walks up to the Jewish leaders. I don't know, what, I don't find anything wrong with this guy. What, why are you, why do you bring him to me? And then so he's like, okay, so you have this custom. So he says, but you have a custom that I should release one man for you at the Passover. So do you want me to release you, the king of the Jews? You want me to release this guy? So what he was doing here, the, of course the Jewish leaders brought him. But at, by this point, a whole bunch of people would have gathered and a whole bunch of Jews would have gathered and are watching this go on. So he's basically trying to, is this just the leadership that are saying this or is this everyone that's saying this? Because he's trying to gauge the world. So he's like, do you want me to release this guy? Um, and so they cry out, and the Jewish leaders would have kind of rallied everyone and says, no, 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 not this man, but Barabbas. Now, Barabbas was a robber, okay? Barabbas was a robber, he was a thief, he was a guy that everyone in the community would have known. If you picture a guy that, that you might know that kind of does shady stuff, it's that like kind of local community where it's like, that guy is a bad guy. And they're like, we would rather have that guy and trade him. Uh, we want to trade the king of the world for the thief. 
And so then Pilate, this is this kills me. Then Pilate took Jesus and flogged him. What? He flogged him? He, like, so he didn't do it himself. He gave him the soldiers. He finds no guilt in him, but he's like, okay, go beat, beat the stuffing out of this guy, and maybe they'll ease up on him. Maybe they won't want to kill if they see him beat up a lot. And so that's what I think he was doing, where he's like, I don't find guilt in him, but maybe if, he, if you see that he's been punished, you'll stop yelling, crucify him. And so it says, and the soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head and arrayed him in a, arrayed him in a purple robe. So I had a professor um, once who talked to me about how at their church they had a crown of thorns. And it was like a properly made twisted crown of thorns. And one day when he was all by himself in the church, he walked over to the crown of thorns. It was like under glass and a case and stuff. And he picked it up and put it on his head just to feel but and he said the amount of pain he felt, not, and they pushed it down on Jesus' head. Just sitting it on his head, the amount of pain he felt it was insane. He's like, and he can only imagine what Jesus went through. But this is just one aspect. So they beat him, and they put a crown of thorns in him. All right, and then it says, then they came up saying, hail, king of the Jews, and struck him with their hands. So mocking Jesus is a thing that um, happens quite often nowadays. You'll see it in society, people make fun of Jesus a bunch, but it was also happening back then. Um, and it's, it's kind of the thought, if they only knew who they were talking to, they're making fun of someone, but if they only knew who this guy was and what he was, and like that he's God himself, they would, they would have fallen down and actually praised him in not mocking him. So, Pilate then went out again and said to them, See, I am bringing him out to you, that you may know I find no guilt in him. So that he's not out there yet. He's like, he was like, fingers crossed. Maybe they'll all go away if they see how badly we beat him up. Okay? So, Jesus comes out wearing a crown of thorns and a purple robe. Pilate says to them, Behold the man. And this is, this is the thing. This picture, uh, you see any blood in this picture? Number one, he's not wearing a purple robe. <laughs> uh, I couldn't literally find a picture of Jesus wearing a robe in front of see in front of the pilot. I tried, and he also looks very much like he didn't just have the stuff in the head. Um There was a picture I found that was very gruesome, and I actually had it in here. And then we had kids walk in, and I'm like, okay, we're deleting that out of this sermon um, <laughs> because I don't want to traumatize anyone. I was gonna say like, if you're squeamish, don't look. But I know kids are gonna be like, yeah, sure. And so um, we, I took that um, right before I came up here. But he would have looked much like he's a crown of thorns in his head. He's been beat. Um, and the whips that were in the picture were normally the whips they used, and they had like bone and iron in them and stuff. They would take out, like leave strips and take out. It was terrible. It's gross. So like he would have been very messed up at this point. And so he's like, Look at this. And so this is when the chief priests and the officers saw him, they cried out, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no guilt in him. So Pilate is literally coming to the end of his patience with this guy. He's just like, I don't. What has he done? I can't, like, I don't understand why you're so much against this guy. The Jews answered him, We have a law. And according to that law, he ought to die because he has made himself the Son of God. Now, this is weirdly inaccurately accurate. Um, so saying that Jesus made himself the Son of God, it's weird because Jesus is God, but he's not the Father God, he's the Holy Spirit God, he's the Trinity and the Sons. So like, he's he's God, so he didn't make himself the Son of God, but he didn't make himself the Son of God. It's this whole weird thing, but like, they're kind of inaccurately inaccurate when it's saying that. But they don't they don't understand that he actually is the son of God. They're just like he's making himself the son. He's saying these things, but he, he's saying truth. So when Pilate heard this statement, he was even more afraid. So this is the first time. So he's been talking to Jesus, and Jesus said he's a king. But this is the first time all of a sudden he's getting the son of God thrown at him. He he must have been like, What? You're the son of God? And so he, he like, okay, that's kind of freaky. So he enters the headquarters again and says to Jesus, where are you from? Because he's like, you've been saying you're a king, and like, you're not, this, not the here, but where are you from? But Jesus gives him no answer. Jesus just says stop. And so he like really wants some clarity right now. He really wants to know exactly what he's getting himself into. Because even though he's Roman, and he probably believes in a bunch of gods, 
Killing the Son of God doesn't sound like something most people want to try and do, because that probably is not going to end up well. So he's just like, I really want to, where are you from? And so Pilate then says to him, will you not speak to me? Don't you know that I have the authority to release you or the authority to crucify you? So he's trying to assert exactly who he is. He's like, do you know who I am? Do you know what kind of power I have over you? This is my identity. I am Pilate. I'm the guy in charge. And then Jesus corrects him. And Jesus says, Jesus answers, you would have no authority over me unless it had been given to you from above. Therefore, he who delivered me over to you has the greater sin. So he basically says, look, I know exactly who you are, and you have no power over me that I didn't allow you to have. And literally, Pilate was put in that moment. Pilate was, was brought to that area of the world as a Roman governor by God so that he would be there talking to Jesus at this moment. And so he's like, you think you have power, but I literally put you in this position. And so next verse says, from then on, Pilate sought to release him. But the Jews cried out, if you release this man, you are not Caesar's friend. Everyone who makes himself a king opposes Caesar. So the Jewish leaders, after failing to get what they want, resort to politics. They, they, they just, because they figured, Jesus is going to say something, and, and Pilate will go, okay, kill him, take him away. Why would I, you know? But he hasn't gotten that, so they resort to politics and said, anyone who says they're a king isn't Caesar's friend, because Caesar is the only king. Caesar's the guy in charge. So, at this one, it says, so when Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and sat down in the judgment seat at the place called the Stone Pavement. In Arabic, it's called Gaga. So he's basically being crushed under the weight of Rome now because he's like, I can't let this guy go easily because he's, they're going to say that, like, they'll literally go above my head and say, did you know that your guy let a king leave? A guy who's imposing Caesar. And this is early in the day. And like, that's, I, you really need to think of this. This is like really early. And you got woken up for this. And he's got to be tired of just being like, what the heck? So it says, now it was the day of preparation for the Passover. And it was about the sixth hour. And he says to the Jews, behold your king. And this is his last shot. He's like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just take this. He goes, behold your king. Before he ends his trial. And they cry out, away with him. Away with him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, shall I crucify your king? And he's kind of like tired with them at this point. He's like, this is your, this is your king. Why? Sure. And they say, the chief priest answered, we have no king but Caesar. So he actually, Pilate ends up as a politician getting what he wants, which is his local people that he's in charge of pledging allegiance to Rome. So he got something out of this. He got the people saying, we follow Caesar. And so he delivered him over to be crucified. And that ends the trial. So that's the whole trial of Jesus right there from Pilate, walking into Pilate's house. Pilate talks with a bunch, beats them, tries to get rid of them multiple times, and then finally gives the Jewish people what they want. And it's the thing, Pilate ensures the loyalty um, of the people, so he probably got thought he got what he wanted, but came out a little confused. The Jewish people were getting exactly what they wanted. They were getting Jesus crucified which is what they think they want, but they don't fully understand what they're asking. And Jesus, though, strangely enough, is the one that gets away with what he wants. And people, people have trouble with this. So God has been planning this for eternity. He's been moving through history, setting up empires, raising and lowering leaders, these nations all leading to this point, to this day when Jesus and Pilate are talking to each other. This was set up a long time ago, and it's been like moving pieces through history. God is, is the chess master of history. He was fulfilled, on that day he fulfilled prophecies. There's things he said and things he did which were set up hundreds of years before. And it was all for God's end game, which was bringing about our salvation. Literally, this was all brought for us. So, all creation has been waiting for this day, literally holding its breath for Jesus and Pilate to meet so that he could go be crucified and say the words, it is finished. It is finished, literally, when Jesus is on the cross that day, because this all happened on one day, this, this section. At the end of that day, Jesus is dead, and everyone's sin is with him. And he says, it's finished. And so, behold the man, 
That's what the message is all about. Behold the man. He comes out and says, Behold the man. Look at him. And I'm saying to you guys today, Behold the man. Behold his love and what he was willing to bring to bear all the sin on himself so that he could bring you into his family. Um, so this week, I want you guys to try and remember that love. And uh, there's lots of our friends, our families, our coworkers who still don't know about that love, who still don't have that love personally, who don't know how much Jesus loved them and what he was willing to do for them and what we, how, how he was set up and what he bared from them going to the cross. And this section is just Jesus laying it out so that he can get to where he needs to be, which is to be sacrificed for us. We can't. Generally, Jesus, these people will never meet Jesus. We can. And so we can point them to the way. That's all I got for this week. So we're going to pray. Um, hopefully that wasn't too beautiful for the kids. Um, <laughs> thank you guys so much for uh, coming this week. Thank you uh, for listening. And uh, let's, just, let's just pray. Dear God, thank you so much. I thank you for every person here. I thank you that every person hearing this might know more today than they've known before how much you love them and how much you were willing to put up with to get to the point where you would have to sacrifice yourself for us. You are a king, and your, your king is not of the world of, of people. It's the world of everything. It's the world of spiritual life. It's not just things. But we are your servants, Lord. You built your kingdom in our hearts. You want your home to be in our hearts. And Lord, I am so grateful for what you've done. I can never express how grateful I am because I'll never get there. I don't have the words, but thank you. Please bless everyone here. Give everyone a great week. Protect everyone, especially from whatever weather might be coming. Um, allow us to come back again next Sunday and uh, worship you together and learn more about you. And, uh, let everyone know that Jesus is the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. In your name, amen. Thank you guys so much. You have an awesome week. Uh, stick around and fellowship with each other, talk to each other, and uh, I hope to see you next week. God bless.